But let's talk about what it is to be fork resistant. What's the point of having a maximum supply of 21 million if you can't protect yourself against a contentious hard fork that will inflate the supply by creating a new project out of thin air? At the time of a chain split or a contentious hard fork, an offshoot project is created. It's at this point that the miners have to decide which chain to designate their hash power to. In the case of Bitcoin, the longest chain or the chain with the most amount of hash power becomes the dominant chain. In a non-contentious hard fork, this is the end of the matter and the old chain will cease to exist. Unfortunately, it's rarely as simple as this and the non-dominant chain can remain indefinitely. This can be seen in the case of Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV and Ethereum Classic. Now, whichever side of this debate you're on, I think most people would agree that in the end there should only be one chain that remains and the other should become obsolete. If this doesn't happen, there is a distortion in the value and the fairness of the project, with investors on both sides having one of the following emotions. So the first emotion would be greed for the easily gained doubling of wealth. The next emotion would be fear for the loss of choosing the wrong project to consolidate in. And then finally, and you see this a lot on Twitter, is anger and an overwhelming need to defend a position and forsake all other contrary opinion. I generally have no problem with the competitive nature of the cryptocurrency space and believe that the project that innovates and has a high level of security will probably win out in the end. However, I do believe that every project should be conceived from its own origins and be built from three forces. So the first force should be time, then energy and then participation. It's for this reason that I'm generally opposed to the contentious hard fork mechanism as more often than not the non-dominant chain doesn't end. When a chain split is allowed to exist, it emulates the original chain in every way to the point of the split apart from in the fundamentals. Without the need to develop over time, it exists. Without the need for energy from participation, it exists. And crucially, without adding any value, it exists. The original coin holders have achieved exponential wealth with no risk. In my eyes, this is no different than money printing or counterfeiting. And just like in our current monetary system, it only benefits the very few. So let's discuss what a chain split is and what actions or events can trigger it. A chain split in the cryptocurrency space can be referred to in many ways. For instance, a fork, a hard fork, a contentious hard fork, a chain split, and probably a whole bunch of other terms that dilute and distort this issue. And to make it even harder to understand, these terms have interchangeable meanings also. So let's talk about these terms. So firstly, fork. Generally, a fork is when an open source project is copied from the original code base and run as a new project. In the open source world, this is a very common practice and is deemed as acceptable under the applied licensing agreement. Forks exist for two reasons. The first and most honorable is to innovate on the original design. The second is to run the same or slightly altered software, but under the guise of a new project. This is purely for the benefit of profit. Unfortunately, this is also commonplace in the cryptocurrency world, and is also deemed as acceptable and legal under the same licensing agreement. The term hard fork is generally referred to when an upgrade has a new set of rules or rule changes such that the older versions of the software will no longer accept inputs created by the newer version. To make sure the network has enough time to prepare, a specific block height is determined for these changes to go live. Hard forks are important because they force everyone in the network to run the same version of the software. Bugs and security issues can start to appear if the network allows multiple versions to be active at the same time. A contentious hard fork or chain split are the terms used when the new rules or rule changes are not agreed upon but are implemented anyway. This has the effect of creating a new chain that competes with the old chain for dominance. In the Bitcoin world, the chain with the most hash power should win out in the end. But as we've seen with previous examples, this is rarely the case. Another unintended consequence of a contentious hard fork is it divides and fractures the community, splitting it in two and weakening the security of both projects. There's also one other term that you will hear thrown around called a soft fork. This is when a protocol is upgraded and older versions of the software can still accept inputs from the newer versions without validating them. 
In the blockchain world, this can be acceptable in the short term as it allows for older software to continue following the chain, but in the long run, it will be more difficult to maintain the code and easier to generate bugs. Usually speaking, a hard fork is extending the consensus rules, whilst a soft fork is tightening them. So once a soft fork is made, it's very difficult to roll back, which is likely to cause a hard fork as a consequence. In the next video, we'll look at how Decred's governance mechanism solves these issues to make it one of the only fork-resistant projects in the space.